Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio on a Wednesday morning. So yesterday, man, it was like everyone just waited to the very last minute to turn in their homework, and then right at the last second, everyone just threw their paper down. That's the way it felt like at the deadline with the trades yesterday. I think you have it summarized right. It was all at the last second. The reason for it, Mike, is that these teams hold on waiting to see what kind of a deal they can get, the best deals. Now, the ones who are selling, of course, they're not going anywhere. They don't care. But the teams that are in contention, that are out to buy these individuals, well, they want them as soon as they can because they're going to be big helps. Cardinals had several of them, all of them predictable because we talked about this for weeks and weeks. (coughs) Jack Flaherty going to the Baltimore Orioles for three minor leaguers. He'll help Baltimore. Now, keep in mind that Flaherty will be a free agent at the end of the year, but I think he probably likes it in Baltimore, and they have a young and -and up-and-coming team. They get an infielder, Cesar Prieto, two minor league pitchers. Prieto from the, uh, I should say, Rom, the pitcher, goes to Memphis, and Prieto goes to Memphis, and Showalter, the other young pitcher, goes down to Palm Beach. So none of those three guys are coming here. Now, Paul DeYoung was traded yesterday to the Toronto Blue Jays, and that's a a very important trade because he'll back up Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette is a star player, all-star player for the Blue Jays, and he's down with a knee injury. And having DeYoung in there in the backup will help. In return, the Cardinals get a pitcher named Matt Svonson, who's been around in a few years now, never really advanced above double-A, and that's where he has been. His kid out of Lehigh University, just uh, not too far outside Philadelphia. And Svonson will come here. He'll be a Springfield Cardinal and probably will be tonight. Justin Verlander, that's the big deal. Justin Verlander, the National League side, well, Major League side, young award winner in the National League, going back to the Houston Astros from whence he came. He was their big winner and World Series most valuable player for the Astros last year. They shipped him off in the winter because it couldn't come to an agreement. New York Mets buying everybody, picked him up. He's done well for the Mets, but the Mets are a disaster. So they decided, hey, he can go back and help the Astros. The key is the Mets pay much of his $93 million salary. (laughs) It's all about money. Really interesting deal, former Missouri State star Jake Berger had 25 home runs for the Chicago White Sox this year. They're not going anywhere. They dealt him to the Miami Marlins, so he's going back into contention and back in the National League. And the Kansas City Royals, Scott Barlow, he is going to the San Diego Padres. And Yarbrough, the kid who was hit in the face back in May but has come back to pitch very well, he is going to the Los Angeles Dodgers. So we had we had a real jumble, a full deck of trades that went on. It was a big deal yesterday. Like I said, everyone waited to the very last minute to turn in their science project. All right, so basketball does actually have a World Cup. Is that right? They do indeed. They've what's the latest? In, well, the World Cup is this year, just like the soccer World Cup for the ladies is this year. And the Basketball World Cup occurs every off year with the Olympics going on. Well, the USA team, and there are two two teams, the USA World Cup team and the USA Select team. They're all NBA players. The World Cup team obviously will play for the World Cup. The Select team will train with the USA team and provide any substitutes should there be any injury. They're pretty good. Anyway, they begin training today in Las Vegas, train for uh, three days, There's an exhibition game Monday night, USA versus Puerto Rico. There are other games around the world prior to the World Cup, which begins later on in August in Manila. And that is where the USA will play most of its games, Manila in the Philippines. Now keep in mind, these are NBA players. They are not big name, but they are in the best league in the world. However, the world supplies some of those players in the best league in the world too. So it isn't necessarily a walkthrough for the USA. No, it is not my guy. It's not a walkthrough, especially when you see the talent in some of these other countries, including probably the best basketball player in the world right now. At the moment, he is. is not USA born. All right. So, uh, Tiger Woods, obviously, kind of been in and out of the uh, tour recently, but now he's on the board. What does that mean? That's a very big deal. He isn't playing, of course, uh, anymore, uh, well, at least for this year. He's not going to play. had ankle surgery, and he's had all sorts of surgeries. Hey, the guy's body can only take so much, so he is probably going to be limited as far as a player is concerned. 
But the players, they said, hey, if we have this merger with the Lib and there's going to be boards meeting and so forth, we want our representative on there. And we want Tiger Woods to be that representative. Tiger is not bashful. He'll, he'll say what comes to mind. And he has been unanimously approved to the PGA Board of Touring Players, and he will offer the players' thoughts on how things should be accomplished. This will be very interesting because he is not a yes, and uh, he's not dotting the I's and crossing the T's in terms of being a... Uh, Administrator, if you will. Well, sometimes that happens. No, he has an opinion, and he knows what should be done. And he ain't going to be shy about saying it. Now that we know... The direction the Cardinals are taking as far as the trade deadline is concerned. It didn't feel like a complete sell-off, but at the same time, it definitely looks like they are making moves towards the future. Well, that's exactly what they've done. That's what the trading deadline is designed to do. It's built for the future. Does it mean that the team is quitting? No, of course not. These are professional athletes, and they give their all every time out and play to win every time out. After all, folks... Their career is at stake. A lot of coaches, a lot of scouts are watching these players, so they are not about to back off. But in terms of the overall strength of the team, yeah, the front office has said, we're probably not going to go anywhere, so let's get what we can. That's pretty much what you see with the trading deadline. It's the contenders getting rich, the pretenders hoping to get rich with what they obtain from the other teams in terms of the future. And I think we probably saw that pretty well. I think you uh, are right on the money with that, and we'll see. There's always next year, as they say, but they were actually on uh, the field yesterday. They get a dub? Oh, yeah. Well, they did not. No, this is the Cardinals you're talking about. Didn't get a dub, and they're on the field. They're on the field until the first week in October. That's when the regular season will come to an end, and highly, highly, highly unlikely the Cardinals will be in the playoffs, but... Nonetheless, did lose last night to the Minnesota Twins 3-2. Do not like Minnesota's offensive attack. Do like their pitching. They are in contention in the American League Central Division, but almost everybody else other than the Kansas City Royals is in contention as well. It's not a very strong division. Minnesota won 3-2. Donovan Solano with a single in the seventh inning, a two-run single that keyed the rally. When Minnesota has some great pitching, they had Pablo Lopez on the hill last night, and he's a former Miami Marlin who they got last winter, and this guy can throw. He had the Cardinals completely thwarted in yesterday's game. Did get a run in the ninth inning on a home run by Paul O'Neill, but hey, that was it. 3-2, to two, the Minnesota Twins win the game. Cardinals are now 14 games under the 500 mark, and, well, they're just fading into oblivion for this year their last place in the national league central division and that's going to be i hope not where they end up but we'll see we'll see what happens speaking of the royals how they do got to win they got to win in a most unconventional way played the new york mets up at uh, kaufman stadium in kansas city tie game 4-4 going into the 10th inning the mets scored two runs in the top of the 10th take a 6-4 lead the royals come back and score three runs in their half of the 10th and win the game 7-6. to six. That's pretty much symbolic of how the New York Mets have played this year. They just can't stop anybody. And the Kansas City Royals get the win. Springfield Cardinals, watch out. They are now one game above the 500 mark, and they got a big win last night over Northwest Arkansas, 8-2. to two. This is a six-game series, and the way Springfield is playing now, folks, I wouldn't be surprised to see them sweep this series all six games. Northwest Arkansas is not very good. Springfield Cardinals are playing a whole lot better, and they have some added ingredients from these trades that were made. Oh, yeah, they do. And uh, they could possibly make a run and go on after that Texas League uh, championship at the end of the season. Right now, it's close. It's in their grasp, but they got to finish it strong. Speaking of finishing strong, Ned, you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.